Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. Today's adventure will take us to Animal Kingdom, the first visit back to that theme park since it has reopened and since I've been back here in Central Florida. Staying two nights at the Pop Century Resort and because I booked a room, I was able to gain two more reservations for the parks. Now, as an annual pass holder, I could get three at a time. Once I use one, can procure another. However, little inside tip, anyone who already has a ticket or is an AP, if you stay at either a value resort or any of the other hotels here on property, you are granted a reservation during that time period. You cannot book it after your stay in, so it has to be in that window. So I have chosen to utilize this to go into Animal Kingdom. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? Now there is bus transportation, but I have a rental car. I'm just gonna utilize that to get over there. But if I didn't, I would be able to take the bus from here. I realize that was a little bit of a long-winded explanation, but it is some insight I feel should be shared. Just follow the bus. As of right now, this is one of only the only two parks that are currently open, this and Magic Kingdom. Epcot and Hollywood Studios don't open for a couple more days. Parking situation looks rather mellow. Rope drop was at 8 a.m. Current time, about five minutes to 10 a.m. Didn't want to get here right when it opened for this particular situation. Just kind of wanted to see what it was like to, to pull in here a couple hours after everyone else arrived. Also, the trams I believe that all the parks at the moment are not being utilized. You can see they have them parked right here. No word on when they will return. I am in Butterfly 16. I always like to document this instead of committing it to memory just so I don't forget. They are still spacing out the vehicles. So when you park, you will have no one in the immediate space next to you, which is nice. Plenty of elbow room. I'm walking in the shade right now. I did bring my umbrella, not only just in case of rain, but also for the sun. It is rumored, and I've heard by many people stating that this particular park is the warmest temperature-wise of all of them here on property. This should be fun. Summer, Central Florida, in the toastiest of theme parks. My temperature was 97.4 and bag check was a breeze. Just basically walk right in. Didn't even have to take anything out, show anything. Just held my umbrella up, walk through and good to go. There it is, the center point, the icon of this place, the Tree of Life. This is really nice. This is not a whole lot of people out and these little washing stations are, are out and about as well. Oh. Hear them over there making some noise? Some directional arrows here showing some of the attractions with a little very unique rusted out sign type of vibe. Oh yeah, I really enjoy that attraction to the icy peaks of not the Matterhorn, but Everest. They have the markers stretching all the way back to here. Oh, just waving to Everest. Oh, there's Goofy waving. It says 87 degrees, but I swear it feels about 10 degrees hotter. Humidity of almost 80% as well. Yeah, it is officially, officially toasty. I want to say that it's the acclimation to me residing in California that is making me sweating profusely. But in all reality, I, I feel as if even if I lived out here, this would still be considered warm. My goodness, this is the second one of these I've already had. Here it goes. Attraction number one, ride number one. It states 25 minutes, current time 11.20. Let's test it out and see what happens. 
Only took about 10 minutes. Not 25. 10 minutes for row 10. No one behind me. So they're, they're splitting up the rows. Your group can be in one section. Behind you is empty. It is. It is bright out here. Sunny. Very sunny. Going up. Going up. Go look down. <laughs> Exiting, they have these machines. It dispenses a little bit of this that you could that you could use. So much fun! I'm gonna do it again. Yep. Nothing in the. Oh, there goes another one. Nothing in these transcriptions saying I can't go more than one time. So doing it. empty train. They're running the trains empty after they clean them every few cycles just to air them out. That's good. I have been utilizing my umbrella and Danny702 has just arrived and she also has an umbrella. Yes. It's, a, it's a good idea, right? It helps a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, keep, yeah. The, keep the sun off the, yeah, off the brow. Works. I have a cooling towel. Oh, you got it all. Yes. <laughs> At this time, we ask that you please exit the queue following the directions of the nearest cast member. Again, expedition efforts is now closed. We are very okay. sorry for this inconvenience, and we hope that you will check back with us later tonight. Um, all right. So much for so much for going on this at more than one time. Oh, you haven't even been on it yet. I haven't gone on it once today. Okay, let's find something else. All right. Another one of my favorites, dinosaur. Going in. The pre-show room is just open air. No standing around. You just continue moving, moving on. Trying to regulate any sort of crowd congregation. Oh, the lights are flickering. We're in the Dino Institute. How long do you think we waited? Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Not too bad. Whoa, going back in time. The time machine. Oh, hello there. Oh my goodness. Got himself a little snap. Hold that thing up. We're almost out. That got a little scary, a little frightening. That was, that was quite a time machine adventure. Only a five minute wait for the safaris. Oh, it's happening. It's happening right now. 
They get the nickname Ghost of the Forest for the rarity of their sightings in the wild. Well, on the right here is another antelope species with that lighter tan coat of theirs, known as the Greater Kudu. An antelope species at around 55 inches at the shoulder. And all the way on the other side of the water and hole there is an okapi. Now the okapi, due to the striping found on its lower legs, is often thought to be related to the zebra. Now they will spend most of their day in the water like this to avoid overheating in direct sunlight. However, at night they walk many miles away from the riverbeds in order to feed out along the shore. Hippo is around 16 feet in length, and they can eat up to half their body weight in a single sitting. Afterwards, they can go a few months without eating anything at all. They'll do that as a way to conserve water during the dry season out on the savannah. Storing all that water in their giant trunks, they're also known as the tree of life. So roam through it. Elephants will knock down trees to eat on them. Giraffe will trim up the trees while browsing. And antelope species and cattle will trim down the grasses. As you reach the bottom of the hill here, there are a number of grazing species out of travel with mountains. You are the ones we are closest to here on our right-hand side. Now they are unique for a small bit of skin at the base of their neck, that loose skin you can probably see here, known as a dewlap. And those help them regulate their body temperature out here. They're one of the only species of zebra to have that. Now just behind them, the herd of white-bearded wildebeest, also known as the new, for the new new grunting sound that they make. They are the second biggest congregator in the world, aside from us humans, congregating in groups of up to 1.5 million for their yearly migrations. You can see some here on the left-hand side as well, there are the trees there. There should be a baby one out here Probably that one right there. Right there, right yep, there. Probably that one right there. On the right hand side, does to be solitary at the moment. It's likely a male African elephant. Male African elephant, once they leave female herds around the age of 12, believe when this happens, it can lead to human and elephant conflict. But thanks to research done right here at Harambe Reserve, we found that African elephants are actually quite afraid of bees. Using that information and working with Kenyan farmers, we've been able to implement bee fences around properties and crop fields. We've got a really great view of an African elephant up here on our left hand side, just across the watering hole there. Yeah. Oh, squirt some water, squirt some water. We can be the jungle cruise. Oh, wow. He's getting his cold or he's hot. Ah, he squirted himself. There you go. That's how he gets the mud on his back. Okay. Now as well as the elephants off to the left, coming up on the left as well, we're also passing by some greater flamingo. So what you the greater that? flamingo get, uh, are the lightest species of flamingo, and they get their coloration over time from their diet of mainly brine shrimp. If you see those little gray puffballs along the island there, those are baby greater flamingo. Now, it will take the baby greater flamingo about one to three years, depending on their own personal diets, in order to uh, gain that light pink plumage. I always think of Three's Company. The intro to Three's Company. Every time I see a flamingo. They've been around since prehistoric times, and they're actually omnivores. While their diet mainly consists of plants and roots, just about anything. Elephants <laughs> are burrowing animals, and you can see their homes down in the ditch there along the side. Now, warthogs don't often dig their own burrows, instead reusing older burrows dug by other animals. And when threatened by predators, they'll back up into their into their burrows with their tusks pointed forward. That spike right there, sleep on earth, that pom -pom. I don't see Spike, he's underneath that, the leaf of that tree.
gonna do it for today if you're new here please subscribe by doing so it helps keep you in the loop and update on future uploads here on this channel take it a step further ring that notification bell and if you enjoyed this particular episode give it a big thumbs up it lets me know you care i'll see you in the next video the vlog is over <laughs>